um, option. And that which really want, we wanted to hark back to the original CNC, where right at the beginning, you know, you've got the TV channels and you choose GDI or not and all of that. Um, and at that point, the story basically runs in parallel, where, you know, we didn't want it to be like some of the games where you have two different endings and thus there's nowhere for the story to go. You know, from there, even though this is the end, you know, we want the universe to continue and we want the so the fiction to be consistent. So it is running in parallel. And what you really do is you get to see a lot of get a lot of insight, not only into what Nod was doing, if you were playing the GDI campaign and then you play the Nod campaign, but also the effect of your actions on one side where you thought you were doing the right thing. You see it from the perspective of the other side and you go, oh, maybe it wasn't really the right thing. Maybe what I was doing was misguided. So we really deal with a lot of moral gray areas in the story while also sort of running the narrative in parallel. It took a really long time to get this mar narrative built. In fact, the document that really details it out is so large, I need to print it on a poster plotter, otherwise it's unreadable. Nice. Um... So uh, David Rains asks a kind of interesting question. Uh, from idea to final render, how long does it take to design a unit? Oh, that's a great question. Um, unit design is interesting because what we tend to do is rather than just go, well, this tank would be awesome, is we break down each faction, or in this case each class, into its tiers and then the combat role of each unit in the tiers so we can balance them out and go, okay, well we need, you know, one medium infantry, we need one heavy caster and so on, and then work out how to fill those roles. Um, we have basically spent four weeks locked in a conference room with the entire design team and occasionally engineers and artists and other people just hammering that out. And so a lot of the, un the units tend to be designed sort of pretty early in the process. Actual unit production is, it takes a while because we go through a ton of iteration. I know some may not believe that, uh, but we actually do spend a lot of time trying to get the look of the units right, to get the affordance or, you know, the readability of the units right. And we try and do that as much as possible before we've spent a lot of time and money on animation and texturing. But it, generally it's a sort of, you know, if you ignore the downtime while we're waiting for art and everything to come together, it's about a two, three week turnaround per unit. It's uh, pretty intensive. I know any of the guys in the mod community have had fun building units in our technology knows it's not the easiest thing in the world and it's very hard to get right. But once they're in and working, we spend an equal amount of time tuning and balancing and changing them. You may notice that the Nod avatar got significantly visually redesigned because people weren't that into it, which I completely understand. We've done the same with a couple other units. And we try and iterate wait right up until the powers that be say, hey, you got to ship the thing. Cool. And uh, to kind of tie into that, uh, Mattis uh, Plompu asks, uh, will CNC4 have a world bu builder to make custom maps? Or will you, will you have like a, a, a tool set for the fans to make their own maps and units and all that stuff? That's the plan. I mean, there's definitely, if you've been following the news, been a bit of upheaval within the RTS team. So our resources are a little limited right now. But yeah, we're working on getting World Builder. We're hoping that we can put together a full mod SDK for the game and all of that. I can't promise that. Please don't hold me to that. But I'm fighting really hard to get that to everybody because I love what people do with the games. I mean, I did an interview on Friday in which I kept talking about the forgotten mod rather than the game I was meant to be promoting, which was kind of fun. <laughs> All right. And then uh, what's the future of the scene of Command and Conquer after the dev team left EALA? Well, there are a few of us still left. I mean, there's me, there's a couple other guys, a bunch of our engineering staff. But what we really, what we're trying to do is sort of go back to the source. As you know, we've basically been making a game a year for almost 10 years now. And while... That's cool in that, you know, we have a lot of RTS games out in the market. People seem to like them. It means it's very hard for us to move forward with our design or our tools or our technology as quick as well as we'd like. So we're, you're probably not going to hear much from us for a bit. But when you do, I think you'll be pretty impressed. Because what we want to do is really look at how we get RTSs onto the market. Because for me, the best thing about an RTS is the conversation with the community and the evolution of the game through that conversation. 
But when you're doing a boxed product and it's, you know, 60, 50 bucks and you put it out in the store and they buy it, it's, you know, you can continue to, you know, it can be modded, you can continue to patch, but the sort of the game is what it is. What we're moving, what we'd like to move towards is something more like a service where we put stuff up, we see people how it respond to it, we change it up, and it becomes more of an ongoing iterative thing rather than just being a boxed product that uh, we put out and go, well, this is what we made, enjoy. But yeah, we're definitely, right, in fact, right right before I came in here, we were meeting and discussing about the future of the CNC universe. And I think people who miss things like Tiberium harvesting and base building, you will be more than accommodated with whatever we do next. All right. Um, Dries Kappa, I uh, hope I pronounced that right. Uh, how many maps, uh, well, excuse me, uh, how many multiplayer maps will be released at start? I believe last count we have 12 multiplayer maps released at start. We originally had a lot more and uh, decided to cut down to the ones that were really good because, for instance, CNC3 we shipped with a ton of multiplayer maps, but half of them weren't up to the quality that we would like. So we really wanted to only go with the good maps. And then we, we have a bunch more sort of in the hopper that hopefully will make it out to the community over the next couple months. Okay, cool. Then uh, I've seen this question uh, more than once in the forums and all that. Uh, Zane Ross asks, why is the uh, zoom in the game so close to the ground? Uh, yeah, that's uh, an issue really with, with Sage, with our, our game engine, which we rebuilt pretty significantly for Riddler 3, but it's sort of one of just the inherent limitations of our tech, unfortunately. And uh, because we try and get the game to run on so many different PCs, so you can, you know, go back a couple of years of hardware and still play CNC4, we're a little limited in what we can do there. It's something we're definitely exploring for the future. Um, I would really like to be able to zoom out more. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, crazy Supreme Commander zoom, but I, I agree. We, you, we're zoomed in pretty close right now. Uh, we're working on that, though, so while we can't fix it for CNC4, we're definitely working on that for future products. Okay, cool. And then uh, Daniel of Voigtlander asks, uh, are there any ideas for future products like expansion packs or patches or anything like that? Well, we'll definitely be supporting the game. Even with all the events that went down, we've made sure that we have a strong patch team who are going to stick around and make sure you know, bugs get fixed, we get get some more content out to the marketplace, all of that. Beyond that, you know, expansion packs and so on, I really can't say. EA has snipers and a PR person with a weapon standing right behind me. But uh, we'll definitely be supporting the game. <laughs> well, that's, that's good to hear, despite the uh, armed PR people. Um... And uh, Daniel Voigtlander also asks, uh, in what way will the screen be playing a part in CNC4? Well, I'd like to say that the screen are a full faction with, you know, 80 units and so on. But unfortunately, the screen, at least in terms of a, as a playable faction, don't really factor into CNC4. It was a tough decision to make. I mean, I was key in the design of the screen for CNC3. Uh, if you've played the campaign in CNC3, I did both the GDI and Nod screen invasion missions, so I'm very close to the screen. But we just realized with the time and resources we had, we wouldn't be able to get the screen right. And we thought, you know, CNC really boils down to GDI versus Nod. And so if we're going to do a third faction, we can't half-ass it. We have to do it really well. So the screen are a story point within CNC4, but they're not playable in any way. Okay, cool. And then uh, to kind of talk about multiplayer, um, Moses Cat asks, will uh, players that leave be replaced with uh, AI, or will the current system be used? Uh, we spent a lot of time experimenting with having players be replaced by, by AI, and it tended to cause more problems than it solved. To be honest, I don't know where that ended up, which makes me sound really dumb. Hi, I'm dumb. Uh, but yeah, I believe the current system in the beta will be used, because yeah, the it just ended up overloading our AI, AI team to the point that we would end up with really sucky AI, <laughs> to be entirely honest. You know, it was we wanted to use the resources to make the AI as good as possible. Okay. And then... Uh... How many, uh, Dries Cappard asks, uh, how many missions are in CNC4? 
We have uh, 17 missions in the campaign. Uh, they're outside the first three that kind of set up the story and teach you the game. They're all pretty lengthy, with the idea being that because you can come at it, come at the mission with anything from